startling new insight into the addictive power of sugary, salty, and fatty foods. Would you believe doctors have found that cravings for junk food may be as strong as an addiction to heroin or cocaine? Here's ABC's Juju Chang. In the fridge, we've got... Um We've got some cheesecake, which is... Carrie Banks has a serious weakness. And I think there's... We still have um, ice cream. I could eat half a pack of Oreos and milk and consider it nothing. And saying no to the cravings? Forget about it. If I wanted the food and it was available, I would eat it. Pretty much without thinking. Okay, so the chips, french fries... Obesity researchers believe Carrie's sweet tooth could actually be more like substance abuse. Dr. Joe McLaren at Duke University studies the brains of smokers or drug addicts, and his studies show that for many obese people, junk food can trigger the same response. You can see activation in both cases in a region called the striatum. It's the part of your brain that tells you whether something is something you want to go after or if it's something that you want to avoid. But it's also the part of the brain that's involved in learning habits. In a new study, scientists at the Scripps Research Institute found similar results in rats. Pleasure centers in the brains of those fed high-fat, high-calorie food became less responsive over time, a signal that the rats were becoming addicted. Once hooked, not even an electric shock could stop them from a junk food fix. Your brain reacts almost identically to a cocaine addict looking at cocaine. And the interesting thing is that someone who's obese has even more similarity to the cocaine addict. So somebody who is obese is literally addicted to junk food. In in many ways, they can be addicted to junk food. For Carrie, the trigger foods mostly are high fat and high calorie. Okay, Carrie, are you ready for the first scan? She's been trying to fight her cravings for three months, eating a special low-fat diet as part of a study Dr. McLernan is doing with funding from the Atkins Foundation. It was a month into the diet that I could eat one slice of pizza and be okay with that one slice and not have to eat half the pizza. That's all the information right there. Obesity experts believe treatments used for addiction recovery may hold promise in fighting obesity. We know that people can learn new ways to live that are healthier. That's part of the challenge right now, is developing new techniques and new diets that help people learn those new ways of responding to food. For Good Morning America, Juju Chang, ABC News. And joining us now is Dr. Eric Braverman. He's professor of integrated medicine at Weill Cornell Medical School and author of the new book, The Younger, Thinner You Diet. Good morning to you. Good morning. So how do you know if you're addicted, I mean, can you tell what's going on in your brain when you're eating fatty or salty or sugary foods? Yeah, you can't live without it. You can't go a day without sugar or salt. You go to that refrigerator with kind of that addictive craving, looking right. for it, and you're just plain hooked like pot, alcohol, heroin, and cocaine. Really? As serious as that? Or be, and, and I saw that you said that maybe even more serious in more, some cases. More seriously because it hits a, a brain circuit called dopamine where you basically push the button in an addicted way and it's slow addiction. You slowly get obese, diabetes, hypertension, cancer. Basically obesity drives disease and kills you worse than any other condition. Right. So is there a way to trick your brain? Is there a way to fool your brain into thinking, okay, I'm having some of these bad well, things? The good news is actually you're healing your brain, healing your metabolism, and you can really have an end to childhood obesity by basically starting out with natural sweeteners for sugar craving, cinnamon for sugar craving, spices for salt so, craving. So, so skip the sugar skip and have something like... Uh, Stevia, Truvia, uh, even you know the classic brands of, of sugar substitutes, and cinnamon also cuts the craving for sugar. That's interesting. I didn't know about cinnamon. Uh, And then for salt, we all eat so much salt. What do you do? Well, buy fresh spices. If you can't buy the fresh spices, use the, you know, basically oregano, rosemary, basil, cumin. But fresh spices are packed with antioxidants five times what berries have. So when you eat fresh spices, you supercharge your brain with high nutrient density. And you can cut your addiction and lose weight. And it's it's a permanent, you know, change in your brain. So you no longer crave it. That would be great. Uh, and, And if you're addicted to the oil. Or the, Oils. You know, the get into olive oil, sensation. get into natural uh, herbs and things, but particularly olive oil, safflower oil are substitutes, and basically eating healthy and exercising will cut your addiction and you will defeat obesity for our children and for yourself. 100 pounds of weight loss is not unusual. Can addiction be passed?
passed on from a parent to a child? Because we're seeing so many waves of obesity now in this country. Yeah, it's really actually connected to this dopamine gene where you have alcoholism and obesity being linked. So you can basically pass on addiction, but the good news is you can break addiction. It's not so overwhelming like height and the color of your eyes. You can break addiction by changing your habits and lose weight permanently. I do wonder if, if, if we blame addiction for all this, are we sort of, is it a little bit of a cop-out that, oh, I'm not, you know, it's not me, it's I'm, my body's addicted to this? You know, we it's all have, free, everything's determined, yet we have free will. The reality is we live in a culture that's a little dangerous for your brain because you're bombarded by salt in the restaurants, right. sugar everywhere, junk food everywhere, fried food everywhere, and you need to take charge of your brain, take charge of your life, and lose weight permanently. Dr. Braverman, thanks for being with us this morning. Thank you.